Well, that's none of my business. <laughs> Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and you know that this video is serious because I'm coming to you from my computer desk. I thought about making this video a few days ago, but decided not to because it, it really wasn't that involved. And I was talking to Tarantula Cat. She said she was gonna mention it in one of her videos, and I just didn't want to step on anyone's toes. David already made a video. It just, it just didn't seem like it was something that I should do. But then I realized yesterday that I had no video for today. I had been working so hard on getting the video for for this coming Tuesday, kind of like a nature documentary style on another specific species of tarantula. I never got around to recording anything for Friday. In fact, I thought I had a video already recorded. Well, I mean, I did have a video already recorded, but unfortunately it was on those external hard drives that I lost at Virginia Beach, so uh, I, I didn't have anything. So this is what we're gonna do today, talking about some tarantulas and controversy in the hobby. So in case you don't know what's going on, we'll fill you in real quick. Someone left a comment on one of Dark Den's videos saying that he was trash or something. I don't remember it exactly. Essentially just went into the comments of a Dark Den video and was promoting uh, someone else's channel and maybe even like saying that Dark Den videos weren't good or something. I, I don't remember. And that's because I've seen so many of them lately. It seems every time I upload a video, there's a couple people leaving comments being like, ah, this guy sucks. Go check out Dave's Little Beasties or Exotic Slayer or some other channel. And apparently it's also happening to Dark Den, Tarantula Cat, and I'm sure many other YouTubers out there. Normally you just kind of ignore stuff like that. You don't pay it any mind. It's the internet. That's what people do. But this week, Petco from the Dark Den took a screenshot of that comment, put it on his Instagram, and it just kind of blew up, stirred up a whole bunch of controversy. So much so that Dave's Little Beasties made a video essentially admonishing whoever it was that left that comment on Dark Den's video. If you haven't had a chance to watch that, I highly suggest checking it out. He, he made some very good points in there. And apparently the person that left this comment is just some like 13 year old kid. So, I mean, it's, it's a whole bunch of hubaloo over, you know, nothing really. It's just important to know that it was not a fake account. It was not Dave's Little Beasties doing some guerrilla marketing in the comments section of other Tarantula YouTubers videos. I mean, Dave seems like a really good dude. I've always had a pleasant interaction with him. Petco's a good dude. Like there really isn't any animosity in between anyone here. And that is the misconception that I, I really want to address in this video very quickly. And that is that we're not competitors. We're a community. Now I'm really just talking about YouTubers, but this applies like across the board. But as far as YouTube is concerned, we're not competing with each other. It's, it's not like my channel competes with Tarantula Cat's channel or anything like that. We're a community. The only one that we're competing against is ourselves. We want to make the next video better than the last video. And we help each other out all the time. And not just like doing collabs. We share pictures and footage and resources and information. Try to help each other make the best possible videos. We talk to each other a lot behind the scenes. I mean, some of us may talk to other YouTubers more than some, but you know, that's that's just the nature of humanity, I guess. But the important thing is that we do have open lines of communication and there's there's really no beefs or drama or anything like that. Sometimes people will say stuff you don't agree with and there may be a little back and forth there, whether it's like over information or you know how someone behaves or something like that. But by and large, all of that stuff aside, still like and respect and watch each other's videos. Essentially, we're more like coworkers than competitors. I think like the only real competitors in the tarantula hobby are tarantula dealers, and even they work together. They share males and go in together on importing species into their country. So even though they may be competing for customers' business, behind the scenes, they still kind of help each other out. It's really a rising tide lifts all ships kind of situation. There is a definite incentive for wishing that others are successful. The more people that are attracted to the hobby, the more people are gonna be watching your videos or buying your enclosures or getting tarantulas from you. So for the most part, everyone's trying to grow the hobby, not tear each other down. And it's important to note that trashing someone's channel in their comments or promoting your channel or your favorite channel in the comments of someone else's video, it, it never really works. All it does is make you look bad and whatever channel you're promoting look bad. It's just basic courtesy, uh, politeness. If you really want to support your favorite channel, the best thing you can do is like, comment, subscribe, and share the videos. Even better than that, just based on the way the YouTube algorithm works, is when you watch a video by your favorite creator, 
Watch another video right after that. More important than liking, comment, subscribing, and all those things you can do to engage with the video, what YouTube really wants as a company is for people to be on their platform watching videos. So if you just show up, watch one video and leave, YouTube kind of looks at that as a bad thing. Even if you watch the entire video, like, comment, subscribe, all that. The biggest thing you can do to help your channel is to watch that video, and then as soon as that video is done, watch a second video by that same channel. I suggest videos at the end of each of my videos to encourage people to keep watching. But it doesn't even need to be one of my videos. If you just watch any video after you watch your initial video, it feeds the YouTube algorithm a lot of positive input. And the algorithm decides that this video keeps people on our platform watching other videos, so we're gonna promote it even more to a wider audience. And the crazy thing is you can subscribe to as many YouTube channels as you want. It doesn't cost you anything. I mean, it's as easy as just clicking a button. So you can be subscribed to my channel and Tarantula Cat and Dark Den and Dave's Little Beasties and anybody else that makes Tarantula videos. And subscribing to one channel does not hurt the other channels at all. In fact, if anything, it helps everybody. It shows YouTube that there's a lot of people that are really interested in Tarantula and invert-related content. And it's the same with Facebook groups and subreddits and all that kind of stuff. You can belong to as many of them as you want. Being a member of one doesn't hurt the other. It doesn't cost anything to join. So any beef or arguments or rivalry or competition is, is really just ridiculous. It's just people feeding their need for drama. Now this next controversy is my business, like quite literally. Part of the reason I decided to make this video today after initially deciding not to make it is because I got a very shocking phone call yesterday. A pretty prominent member in the tarantula hobby called me up to ask me about a rumor. He said he had heard it from a few people and wanted to go directly to the source and find out if it was true before things kind of went out of control. And when he told me what the rumor was, I was kind of surprised <laughs> because it's pretty crazy. What they had heard was that I had sold my channel and my website and the Tarantula Collective brand in general. I had just sold it all to a Tarantula dealer here in the United States. I mean, the Facebook group, the Reddit, the Twitter, everything. I had just sold it all. And that is crazy. I've been working on this for like three years now. And it's still nowhere near the goals I'd set up for like a five and 10 year plan. This is still a work in progress. But it got me thinking. And when I was talking to this person, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not against selling out. If somebody wanted to pay me like $100,000, I'd, I'd happily sell to my brand and, and all the groups and channels and emails and everything associated with it. But after thinking about that a little bit last night and this morning, I, I really think I undersold myself. So like, if you wanna buy the Tarantula Collective, it is now going for a special deal, $250,000 and it's all yours. <laughs> I mean, seriously, no one could afford it. And if they could, they would never buy it. It's not a good investment. It takes a lot of work to, to make these videos and, and kind of keep these uh, different platforms going. I would probably have to pay someone to take it. And that's why I do things like run integrated ads. And maybe that's where the, the confusion came from. They watched a video and, and saw I had a paid promotion in the video and assumed, oh, he must have sold the channel to that person. But I mean, that's that's not real life. That's not how things work. And you watch TV and you watch Watch five minutes of content and you get two minutes of commercials. And it would be pretty crazy for you to assume that Coke or or Ford or whoever has a commercial in the commercial break are the ones that own that TV show or are producing it or something. Like, like we wouldn't think that. But running integrated ads in a YouTube video, I mean, it, it's very common practice, happens to a lot of other tarantula YouTubers and, and pretty much anyone that is trying to make a business out of making YouTube videos, you're, you're gonna see integrated ads or paid promotions. It makes a lot more sense for a business to pay a content creator to have like a 30 or 60 second ad built into a video than to pay Google to have an ad ran before or like in a mid roll or at the end of a video because then they don't really know if they're hitting their targeted audience or if that ad will actually play in the video that they want it to because YouTube ads is kind of like a, a, an auction. Uh, you're just bidding, whoever gets the highest bid, their ad runs on that video. So there is really no guarantee and it can be very expensive if you get into like a, a bidding war. So sometimes it's easier and more effective to just go to the creator directly. They get more bang for their buck, we get paid a lot more than what Google would pay us, that small percentage for running an ad. So it's a win-win situation which is why I only really run ads for businesses that are related to the tarantula or invert hobby. I mean, I've been contacted by, I don't want to say their names because I'm not running an ad for them, but like clothing companies, uh, one company that makes uh, furniture, like couches and stuff, uh, apps, games, I mean, it's just all kinds of weird emails. They want to run an ad and it's like you have 
absolutely nothing to do with the tarantula hobby, so I, I'm going to pass right now. I really shouldn't be showing you this, but if you remember a week or two ago, I uploaded a nature documentary style video on the Afonapelma calcotes. It was called like the queen of the Sonoran desert. Now that video probably took me about 40 hours to research and write the script, do all of the filming, the editing, color grading, sound engineering, all that stuff. I mean, I, it probably was longer than 40 hours, but 40 hours is uh, just a good round number, so we're gonna stick with that. So in total, since that video came out, this is how much I earn. I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera, so I'm just I'm just gonna take a screenshot, and I'll post it right here. But that's $134 for 40 hours worth of work, which means I made about $3.30 per hour, which is not even minimum wage. So having an integrated ad or a paid promotion in a video is pretty much the only way I can pay my bills now that I'm doing this full time. I mean, you have to have like millions of views per video to really like make a substantial living. But me and, and all these other YouTube channels, we do it for fun. A lot of us have to work second jobs and this is just like a, a hobby. I mean, that's what I did for a few years and just recently during COVID, switched over to doing this full time because I was at home anyways and I, I, I didn't want to go out and get some, you know, minimum wage job somewhere. So I thought I'd, I'd focus on this and try to grow a business. And this journey for me is just starting. I'm, I'm not trying to wrap anything up. In fact, recently I've actually been contacted by some TV and movie producers out in Hollywood. I don't think anything will ever come from it, but just knowing that I've gotten on their radar and I've, I've had conversations with these people is, is really exciting and it just encourages me to keep trying to develop what I'm doing, get better at filming and editing and writing, and maybe one day something will come out of it that's you know bigger than YouTube. But even if I only just make YouTube videos about tarantulas for the next 20 years, I'm gonna be extremely happy about that. So just so we're straight, I'm not selling the Tarantula Collective anytime soon to anyone, probably ever. And YouTube is not about competing with other channels. Like the only ones I'm competing with is myself. The only one Dark Den is competing with is his next video. We gotta work together and not against each other. And I'm not just talking about YouTubers. I'm talking about people that have Facebook groups or people that have businesses or even people that are just hobbyists. You just enjoy watching videos or keeping tarantulas. It will help the hobby as a whole if we are all supportive and helpful and not confrontational and argumentative and just being divisive doesn't accomplish anything. Promoting the hobby is always going to be better than promoting a personality. I mean, if you're a fan of mine and you really enjoy my videos, I encourage you to share them with your friends friends and family. That's awesome. That really helps. But don't do it at the expense of another creator or business or person in the hobby because more than likely they're my friend and I don't want you going on their forum and talking trash about them while promoting me. That's that's not cool behavior. It's not something that I want and I don't think it's something anybody else in the hobby would want either. But really, I mean, this is none of my business. Except for that last thing that that, that part is about my business. So yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. All right, that's it. If you want to see more videos, watch right here because that helps like we talked about. And if you want to see the video from Dave's Little Beasties that I was referring to, I'll link that right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Support all of the tarantula YouTubers out there and I will see you this Tuesday. <laughs>